Hi and welcome to another tutorial from the Golden Room and today we're looking at the ball bounce tutorial and we have our scene set up here I have the purple um, background here with a little gradient to it and we use 7 and use Control alt and 0 to set the camera to the viewpoint so let's go ahead and get straight into it we're going to need a ball and the ball is going to be a circle which is a curve so let's go ahead and go shift a and add that curve good make sure it's a curve and you can also go to add down here and add your elements and i'm going to go ahead and press tab and we do indeed have a curve good so we're going to go into our properties panel then navigate to properties editor and navigate to our curve panel change the shape to 2d collapse all of these options here and leave shape, shape keys open and i'm going to create three shape keys the first key we're going to have is squash and the second key for second key that we're going to have as a shape key is square so squash and square good and this is a little big so i'm just going to reduce the size of it good and we have our circle right here we're not going to change the orange point origin point let's keep that where it is i'm going to lift the circle up here so it drops from a certain distance and i'm going to have it drop about here or maybe lower let's see if i can bring it down again a bit yeah about here is good okay then so the first thing we need to do is set a keyframe for our y insert single keyframe and let's move about 20 frames and let's have it come down to about here. Insert keyframe. Good, so we see it come down. But as we can see already that the interpolation between the points is not what we want. So what we're going to do, we're going to go into graph editor, which I happen to be in. And we're just going to have the graph editor window below us. And then we're going to navigate to the right hand side and we're going to alter the F curve settings on the active keyframe and interpolation we're going to change it to cubic and we want it to be ease let's see if we can use ease out first um actually i think it's what um yeah it should be ease out no it's ease in good and that looks more like a ball dropping increasing in acceleration until it hits the ground good that's exactly what we want then we're going to just space out for about 10 frames and you're going to insert another keyframe here for the location for the y and you're going to move 20 frames again so that's going to go to 50 frames and you're going to have it return to the original height that it was dropped from so we're just going to copy that height come here and paste the height over 50 frames good and insert keyframe drop and we want this to be an ease out using the same cubic good so it's going to drop and rise great drop little space and rise and we're going to have it drop one more time so we're going to go ahead and add a another keyframe about 20 seconds away let's go ahead and insert that keyframe about here at 70 and we're going to carry it back to the same point that this keyframe was on so we're going to copy this keyframe here so at the y location move to the 70th key um frame and just enter in oops use copy instead we go ahead and copy that one more time Control c and then come over to the 17th frame and hit Control v and insert single keyframe good and then we're going to use an ease in cubic ease in great excellent so now we need to add some reactive physics here sorry about the crickets in the background i'll try to remove with audacity but sometimes the night is the only time i can get to record so we have it right here Ball is dropping and rising and dropping again. 
Good. So we need to add some reactive physics to let us know that the ball has touched the ground. Something like the ball squashing and then the ball releasing, you know, after it's been squashed, you know, to help to tell the story. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to press tab and go to our curve panel in our properties editor and we're going to go to our squash. Good. So where the squash is necessary is down here. So we're going to go ahead and select all of these keys and we're going to go ahead and squash them. Just bring down everything. Great. Get something that looks like this. This up a bit and this up. Let's take a look at how that squash looks. Okay, that looks okay. We may not need to go all the way down, but we have it just in case we do. So let's go ahead and play character this keyframe right here and increase the squash to about a 0 0.5 value here. 0 0.4, sorry. Then we're going to move it here and we're going to release the squash and have it lift up. Good. So it touches it. We want the squash to go down, sorry. I have add this insert this keyframe. And here we have the squash here. Okay, so we're going to need to add another keyframe in the middle where the squash goes down. Now currently where it is is a bit too far. So we're going to pick a spot in the middle and insert a keyframe and then here we're going to release. Okay, good. That looks more like it. As I said, let's move this in the middle a bit more. Great. Now we have a little bit of delay on the bounce and we're going to get rid of that by using the ease, the cubic functions instead of the Bezier that comes as, you know, um, the first and automatic interpolation mode. Let's go ahead and add some cubic interpolation here. Good. And we can see that already the bounce looks so much better no space in between it and we have our ball good so we know we're going to have that as the last bounce you know for the second portion so we're just going to do that from now so we're going to select all the keyframes hit shift and d to duplicate them press g and x and i'm going to move them along until it lines up with the last point here good so everything is moving. Okay, that's my baby knocking on the door. You know, and everything is moving the way that we have planned. Good. So the next part is that we're going to have the rotation and the square morph. Good. So for that part, we're just going to go and navigate towards the release point. And we're going to go to the square and let's set the square. So to set the square is actually quite easy. First up, we have to change all of our keyframes to free. So all of our handles to free, sorry. I should have done this first, but I think I forgot free. And now with everything free, let's see if it causes any problems. No. So we have to set the handles to free first. Good. So now that everything is free for squash coming here and square, let's go ahead and change all of these to vector. And when we change it to vector, everything turns to square. So we see that the vector handle type makes every vertice handle a corner and so we automatically get a square. Good. The only thing we have to do to set this is to change it back to free and the position is maintained. So if we 
toggle between the, the circle and the square value, we can see that it is indeed turning to a square. Good. So now that we have our square, so to do that, I think I went about, about that a bit too quickly, you just need to make sure that the handle type that you have for your keyframes is set to square. Uh, your shape keys is set to is set to free. Once it's free, then when you um, have your square um, shape key active, you you press V and go to the handle type vector, and the vector will change all the handles into corners, and thus you get a square. Good. Then you just have to change the handle type back to free, and it will, and then the change will be recorded in the shape key so you automatically get a square good so we have that right there and we're going to go ahead and add the square and the rotation so we're going to insert a keyframe here and when it reaches the top we want it to change to a square good and when it reaches the bottom we want it to change from a square let me move this a bit back to a circle good and insert keyframe good so we see it's changing from a square to a circle now we kind of don't we don't really want to be using the bezier for this we're going to use cubic and ease out and we're going to use cubic and ease in here Oopsie, wrong one. Cubic and ease in. Good. Excellent. So last, last but not least, we're going to move on to the rotation. Let's go ahead and add that now. Let's go to our object panel in our properties editor. And at this point, we're going to add in a rotation. It's going to be zero and the rotation is along the z-axis good so about here we want it to rotate to about negative 180 or negative 90 actually let's make it negative 90 you know, inserts placing a keyframe good and then it's going to make a fast turn at the end to negative 360 insert single keyframe good and that concludes our ball bounce tutorial our ball bounce shape morph tutorial if you enjoyed this tutorial give it a thumbs up if you have any questions be sure to ask you know, if you have any suggestions on, you know, the easier flow of the tutorial, you can go ahead and leave that in the comment section. I appreciate that. I still have a lot to learn, you know, and I'm happy to hear from you. So until I see you again with another Blender motion graphics tutorial, get up and design a new Later.